What's up guys? So we have a little bit of an update today uh, regarding the 57 Strat project. In the last video you guys saw me totally disassemble it, uh, go through the pros and cons of the guitar, figure out what I needed to buy, which wasn't wasn't really much. You know, it looks like I'll have to get some um, surgical tubing for the uh, pickup spacers. Uh, I've already purchased the surgical tubing and the intonation screws on the bridge. Other than that, the guitar is you know, in need of a refin. Some big news coming on that at the end of the video. But first, I want to talk about the neck. So here we are back with the neck. Um, as you can see, it is now fretted with 6100 fret wire. Uh, I chose this fret wire because it's something that I'm quite comfortable with. All of my other guitars have it. I've always liked the way these frets have crowned up and, you know, felt when you play them. Uh, I like to put a nice, really strong crown up top, so... I'm gonna work on these really well. They went in quite easily. I did some some work. I did this over a couple of days. I removed the frets top side, pulled them straight out the top, which is usually a no-no. You usually drive them out the side. But I've seen a couple of luthiers do it out the top on the old Maple Necks. Eric Daw being one of them from uh, Pinup Guitars. You know, I, I had a little confidence in watching his video. But they really just came out quite easy. So I used that method. I tried it on the last fret on the, the fingerboard and it just came right out beautifully. So in this section, I'm going to walk you through uh, removing the frets, cleaning the board, getting it prepped, and then installing the frets in. Uh, I'm not going to go into huge, huge detail because if you've been on this page for a while, you've seen me refret a Strat, uh, my 57 Esquire, which is very similar neck to this, and my uh, 335. So. You can check out the cliff notes here on the fret job. So normally, like I said, I would drive these out sideways, uh, heat them up. But for some reason, I mean, you can see the other fret slots here, how clean they're coming out. I'm just taking my time with these uh, fret removers. And maybe because the guitar is so old, maybe because, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe because it's been played to death at the, the frets. They're not really giving me a hard time. And I'm actually just able to remove these frets nice and easy without getting any chip out. And I've already done most of the neck so far. I was on the phone with a buddy and I, f I figured, let me just try the last one here. That way I wouldn't create an eyesore and it just came right out, just much like this one. I mean, there was no stress involved. And I mean, when you wipe that out, that's a clean, that's a clean slot. Hold on one second. Keep it going, honey. Just, just using this to clean, do the initial cleanup, and I'm passing this through. But you can see, you know, obviously I'll uh, cut these slots a little better, but you can see how clean that is. So this thing's just going really well, all the way down. One left there. Okay, guys. So earlier you saw me remove the frets out of the neck. Um, and then you take a tool, like a fret slot scraper like this, and you just, you know, you want to get all that crud that's in there. It just, you can see some of it coming out, but you want to get some of that out, you know. And I'm a stickler for frets and fret dimensions and knowing about them. So the part that goes in this slot here is called the tang. And when you order frets, you'll usually get the dimensions of what the fret is. So my tang is a 20,000th tang. Which these, the stock fenders of the original vintage fenders were 18 thousandths, so no big deal. But I have my Stumac fret saw, 20 thousandths, and I'm just coming through here. And you're kind of cleaning up that groove, you know, to accept a 20 thousandths tang. Now, the other thing is, a newer fret, the tang is much longer. Than so I like to take this Stumac uh, fret slot depth gauge. And it comes with two measurements. The first line is 60 thousandths. The next line is 70 thousandths. You can see there. And I'll just come into my fret slot. And I'll get a visual of what I'm working with. So I got to adjust that slot a little more on the base side here, I feel. And then you just pass it through. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to get this neck prepped and hopefully get some frets in it real soon. Okay, so you can see here I'm cutting the fret to length, leaving it to overhang the, f the fingerboard about an eighth of an inch. Using some wood glue here to just get inside that slot lightly. It looks like a lot, but 
most of it will be wiped away just to fill up the voids and help hold the, the frets in you get the fret placed in and I hammer the ends in first because it's over radius slightly just to bite down coming with my seven and a quarter call here's the full example now so you see I'm at the point where I've cut the fret to length I have the glue on the board I'm hammering in just the ends to seat those first and I come in with the press and the call and this is what you want to look for when setting a fret in you got your glue squeeze out right there that means that all of the surface under that part of the fret has been squeezed out so what I'll do now is I'll nip the edges of the frets that I left a little longer cut those as flush as I can we still gotta obviously clean it up once it comes time to level and crown and do all that and I'll press it in one more time just in case me cutting those ends disturb the fret probably just get a little more squeeze out when you do it there you go it's really what you're looking for uh, most guys don't use glue I just like it it doesn't you know it doesn't really hamper anything I do a neat job you can see where most of the glue is wasted and you end up wiping it off you're only really using enough to fill the void under the slot you just wipe your area clean it, glue wood glue also allows you to clean up it gives you more time to clean up and I did that 21 times. There you go. What's up, guys? So, yeah, like you saw on the clips, we just got the 57 Strat Neck refretted. I went with the 6100 fret wire because it is what I'm used to. Uh, most people, you know, wanted the 6105, but at the end of the day, it's got to be comfortable and uh, play how I feel. Putting the taller fret in here made the neck feel a little fuller as it is. And don't forget, there's no strings on, the nut's not set right, but I still got to shape the edges. Uh, obviously level and crown, but I already checked it with a fret rocker and we're doing really well. So the install went great. I just wanted to give you guys an update. You can see down there the rails are in. It's nice and flat all the way down. Really, really nice job. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back and say really nice job, but we got it done. So everything's going good. I'll check this periodically with a fret rocker throughout the week uh, and just see how they're doing and then we'll uh, we'll get into shaping. But yeah, man, I just wanted to give you guys an update. A lot of fun. So after, you know, we got the neck prepped, uh, <clears throat> being a mechanic, I kind of look at things from a, how can I fix this point of view? The intonation screws were all frozen inside the saddles. So I used uh, a little croil. It's basically a really strong penetrant oil that we use at work and a little uh, blowtorch. And I was able to use a little bit of heat and a little bit of uh, you know elbow grease and get those screws to free up. Now they, <clears throat> the saddles I'm gonna reuse, but the screws are, uh, they're just blown out. You know, I wanna just put a new set in. I understand that there are the old ones and I'll put them in a bag aside, put them in the case for the guitar, but as far as functionality and setting intonation, which I feel, especially with a big fret and higher action, you really want on point, I'm gonna replace the screws. And you know, over time of playing the guitar and sweating on them, and they'll get a relic look of their own. So I'll show you how I freed that stuff up here. All right, guys. So here we are, early morning at the shop. I'm trying to free up these intonation screws. They are frozen in the saddles. Um, you know, sometimes these can break because they're so small. It's only a number four screw. But if you really just take some patience um these are stuck as it is in there really great penetrant oil i use we're trying here see if a combination of the oil going in there and the, and the heat being applied I don't want to damage it, but I also want to get a firm grip on it. So I'm going to use a pair of vice grips to just hold the saddle in place. So one other method I found is I had no look at the screwdriver. And like I said, I don't want to damage the saddle. These intonation screws going this way, I probably will replace because they're extremely rusty and frail but i was able to get a nice small pair of flat jaw vice grips on the head of the screw 
and go back and forth too so you can clear the threads up and there you go it broke so we're gonna have to do some surgery on that one moving on so i heated this saddle up and the penetrant spray in there. This one seems to be coming out, which is nice. All right. So you can see how small the screw is. You can't really expect much out of it. Spray. Now the heat will draw the penetrant into the threads too. And, um, just to clarify, I did make sure to blow all this out with an air tool beforehand to get any debris out. Yeah, see that method worked really well. So that one's out as well. That's hot. Try to just get all of that. Or a 1957 strats in good shape some pitting obviously but they all kind of do that yeah doesn't look bad at all it'll clean up quite nicely I'll move on to the saddles now here's that broken one I was able to just apply a little heat and what I'm doing is just working it back and forth in the threads letting it make its own you know path so I don't want to snap it off inside there again and there you go it's just coming out that thing's probably been in that spot for you know 60 years here we are like I said, this is a number four screw, really, really small. Um, but I do have a tap. And just because those intonation screw holes were, you know, rusty and bound up, I'll just send the tap through to the threads, you know, simulating the screw going through there. But you're just cleaning up those holes. Just make sure you get the tap started straight if you ever have to do something like that. You just obviously get a set of saddles and replace it but i want to try to use as much of the original components to the guitar that i can let's see now the screw goes in there nice so that's really what i had to take care of as far as um you know the parts on the guitar i'm still going to clean the saddles up a little bit i'm going to get everything prepped and ready but the big news is the guitar body has been sent off for refin. I phoned up my pal JD Simo and he said, you know, I was, I was going over, like, I want it done right. If I'm going to go this far with it, it has to look right. The body and the neck both have to look, you know, they have to tell a story from the wear, from the headstock all the way down to the body. And he goes, oh man, you got to have Chad Underwood do it. He built guitars for Jimmy Vaughn, Anson Funderburg, Doyle Bram Hall. JD Simo, among others. Really, really great guy to talk to. Um, his stuff is very, very spec vintage Fender. Uh, you know, so much that the Fender Custom Shop guys are, you know, they, they keep a close eye on his work, and I think that says a lot. Uh, he's a busy guy doing guitar repairs, guitar refinish, uh, but JD passed along his phone number. I called him, we struck up a great conversation. Turns out he's a sucker for a 50s Maple Neck Strat his favorite guitar and once I started explaining to him what I had he could practically tell me who sprayed it what the burst would have looked like and we geeked out over the same things and he also put my mind at ease about some things I wanted with the with the reef in. you know I just didn't want a a big brand new shiny reef in where the edge is black and you know most people don't get that sunburst right they don't understand that that's really a chocolate brown on the edge there it's a dark brown and uh, it almost looks purple some ways in the light, but really, really cool. He sent me some examples of his finished work, and, you know, I settled on something that I really, really like. Uh, thanks to you guys, actually. Uh, I can't remember exactly who did it, but uh, somebody posted a photo of a 57 with the perfect color scheme that I wanted. 
So we decided to go with that and tastefully age it. Now I know you guys may say, well, it makes no sense. You're paying somebody for a refinish job and then they're going to age it. I understand that and you're absolutely right. But this neck is extremely worn. You know, it's, uh, it's got to tell a story and it's got to fit it right. Now when I say tastefully aging, I don't mean, you know, uh, tie it up to a motorcycle and, and take it up and down a gravel road. I definitely don't mean that, but it just needs to be tastefully done. It needs to look like that guitar was played in, that finish is sunk in right, the finish is dulled out in areas. And I'm really, really looking forward to what Chad's going to do. He's going to keep me updated with photos so I can share them with you guys as time goes on. But yeah, as far as the 57 Strat project, that's what we're looking at. Uh, that's where we are right now. We have, uh, we still have to crown, level, level and crown the frets, which is something that I'll do in a, in a few days once the frets have sat in there for a while and stayed nice and strong inside the fret slots. Um, we're just going to get the pit guard ready, that assembly all ready. I'm going to make a bone nut once I get the guitar back together. So hopefully in a month we should have all the pieces, all the components, everything ready. I'm really, really looking forward to this project, and I'm looking forward to taking you guys through every step of the way. Coming up this week as well, we're going to have the uh, Trini Lopez, uh, basically like a Trini Lopez dissect video. We're going to pull the pickups out of the Trini, and we're going to blacklight the guitar. We're going to check out the, the color scheme and any cool things we can do to kind of discover a little more information about this mysterious guitar. Not a lot of info, but uh, this thing rocks. And believe it or not, it's funny, ever since I got one, I've seen them pop up. I just watched a video with John Shanks and my good friend John Hay just got himself a Trini Lopez. So I'm excited. I love the guitars I have right now. Um, I'm just hoping that uh, you guys find this content useful. And we'll talk very, very soon. Peace.